is a show that focuses on the person behind the brony. I'm your host, Osaka Jack. Please sit back and relax as we talk to this week's guest brony. Hello, everyone. This is Osaka Jack with Into the Spotlight on Everfree Network. With me today, I have someone who I believe I've spoken with a family member of his at some point, but we're not allowed to talk about that person because of the taboo issue. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. <laughs> Basic, hello. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> Pretty good. How are you? I'm fantastic. Uh, thank you for not bringing up uh, this this person that you have talked to before. Yeah, I I have no memory of what you're talking about. And Good. No memory of this person. Good. Let's just pretend that, he doesn't exist. Yeah, I have no memory of this person that may or may not have lived in the same country as me as I <laughs> do, and never visited me. Never, never would he do such a thing because he doesn't no. exist. So how could you right. visit? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's that's forgivable. Yeah, a person who doesn't exist not visiting. There we go. There, 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 there it is. <laughs> I'm reminded of the Shel Silverstein poem where he said that uh, nobody is my best friend because nobody cares and nobody's there <laughs> and nobody is always listening to me. Oh, so I love nobody. Now uh, that just got really depressing all of a sudden. Um, it's deep because later in the poem he says that he woke up and all of a sudden nobody wasn't there. That's a what? Whoa! <laughs> I haven't thought that hard in a long time. Yeah, I'm sorry. It's, I didn't mean to. It's 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 okay. You know what? It's it's a new it's a new day. <laughs> if anybody is not familiar with you, can you uh, describe a little bit? Who are you? Uh, what do you do? sure. Um, mm. I go to the Naval Academy. Um, I go by mm -hmm. Nate. Uh, to most of people, like who uh, I guess comment on my YouTube channel or whatever. Um. I, uh, I started, I didn't know what electronic music was before I came to the Naval Academy. Um, okay. I was actually introduced to my first music program when I got here um, with a, from a good buddy of mine who introduced me to Dead Mouse, who I'm a huge fan of. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm actually, cool story, which I'll go into later, I'm actually in the process of getting him to come to the Naval Academy to perform. Um, oh, so I'll, nice. get to, I'll get to hang out with him and talk to him, which I'm really excited about because he's a, I'm a huge fan of him. And, right, right. Uh, so... Anyway, um, yeah, way back in the day when I started doing music on FL Studio and Ableton, which are my two main music programs, um, mm -hmm. I wrote this little, uh, I guess you would call it dubstep song, when dubstep was kind of getting out there with Skrillex and Feed Me and mm -hmm. all that stuff. Um, and I brought it home to show my brother, and he, uh, this is when he was first getting into the community, and he was, uh, obviously sure. my brother, who we're not allowed to talk about, is Black right. Griffin. Um, uh -huh. Gabriel Brown. So he's, right, uh, right. he, he showed me this, you know, he, he showed me what he was you know doing in the community and it was very, um, intriguing and he mm -hmm. was getting a lot of followers and a lot of attention. He said, Oh, Hey, let me take this song that you're writing and let me, uh, you know, work it into this, this fandom. And I was like, okay, I mean, why not? So I, I <laughs> took some samples and I threw it into this song and it was literally a song I wrote in just a couple hours. It was, it was, all, it was an experimental mm -hmm. track. Um, right. And it turned into Dash Step, which uh, actually exploded on his channel. Uh, I didn't put it on my <laughs> channel for some reason because I didn't really have any faith in it. It was just a crap song, um, okay. so which was pretty interesting. Um, and then I started writing other music, and my followers um, were all really coming from this one community, this fandom. So I felt mm -hmm. obligated to you know write more and more music for them. That's why I've been working with Michelle Kreber. So I've been working with mm -hmm. my brother. A lot and that's really why we're doing immortal because i think we owe it to everyone who follows him and who follows me to you know make more music for these people because that's i mean i love making well, music. well I, I would hope music. that in addition to you know because you feel you need to i would hope it's something you enjoy doing Ab absolutely i i, I okay. love nothing more than to you know sit down and it, it sounds it's you know it sounds tedious um the music production side of it is uh it does take a long time and uh it doesn't have to um but you know i'll, I'll sit down on a computer you know mm -hmm. probably close to three or four hours a day and then when i'm when i finish a track i'll probably you know scoop out six or seven hours in one day and i'll just sit down and i'll just focus on um mastering a track um yeah and uh you know then i'll send it to my brother you know after like a week and a half two weeks of actually producing the track and i'll say you know mm -hmm. write a melody and some lyrics and he'll do that and he'll send it back in two days and i'm like how did you do it so quickly you know <laughs> um and but he he's really good at that he has all these ideas stored up in his head and because we haven't really gotten together to discuss this stuff you know he just just throws it all on there and gives me a million ideas and then i have to filter through all these different 
you know, vocal samples and put them in the tracks. So, um, right, right. Yeah, but it's, it's, it's a lot of fun. Uh, I really enjoy it. Mm. That's so. good. That's good. I mean, it is, you know, it is very much appreciated and we all like it and stuff, but I would hate to hear that you're doing it just because you think you have to. That would, oh. that would be depressing. For yes, me. yes, it would. It, almost like I, I'm being forced at gunpoint with yeah. by my brother to, to write songs. No, not, not <laughs> 10 not seconds flat. I don't want to say it. 10 <laughs> seconds flat. I don't want to say it. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Um, so it's, uh, it's, um, it's not like that at all. I think I hear your cat in the background and, uh, that's, yeah, yeah. that's, yeah, it's, I'm it's gonna great. that out. Sorry. No, yeah. no, that's fantastic. I love, just keep, keep her in the show. Cats are fantastic. All right. Yeah. Cat, do you want to ask a question or do you want to shut up now? Okay. There no, right. gonna shut up. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So, uh, the, the, the other few tracks that I'm doing for more like a little insider's look, um, the, the album will have 15 And hold on, tracks. before we yeah. do that, I think we should mention uh, flat out that Immortal is an upcoming album. Yes. That, uh, well, I'll, I'll let you speak. Yeah, but... <laughs> it's, uh, it's, uh, it's me and my brother's first completely collaborative album. So sure. we're both super excited. My brother has done, you know, a few songs here and there, um, mm -hmm. you know, or he'll do his own work. I've done a few songs here and there, but uh, every song we end up doing together seems to work really well within the fandom for some reason i'm not i'm yep. not sure why but uh crusader well it and... sounds good <laughs> <laughs> thank you thank you for that um Cr crusader and faster than you know um which were both <laughs> uh kind of our inspirations to start writing the album just happened right, to right. you know people really enjoyed it so we loved that you know we love making things that people want to listen to sure, so sure, uh sure. um we have a bunch more in the works right now. I, I have, unfortunately, I'm looking at my list and I have six more tracks that I haven't even started to produce yet that have to wow. be finished by, you know, whenever our deadline is, which right, is, right, right. is early this year. Um, okay. So I, I'm going to be, I'm going to be working pretty hard this semester. Let's just say that. Right. So um, I'm, <laughs> well, I'm definitely looking forward to it. I think you mentioned it. that it wasn't a specific release date, but you're aiming right. for the first half of the year. That's correct. Um, the first okay. half of the year, which is a huge, uh, you know, it, it, it's, it's a good time frame because it's not like it's not an mm -hmm. exact date because um, otherwise I'd feel pressured yeah. and the songs may not come out right, exactly right. as I want them. So if, sure. you know, people who do listen in, um, I, I would like to apologize first that yeah. uh, that Immortal won't be coming out, you know, January, February. I constantly get these Twitter messages saying, it's, I thought you said it was going to be out on January. And I said, no, I said it would be out <laughs> next year sometime early, you know. Right. So I was obviously me and my brother were shooting for February, um, yeah. but just because of the you know logistics of him you know doing the voice, um, him uh, working with the Creepers, and mm -hmm. you know, me you know uh, going to the academy, it's just a lot of work between all of that. So we're trying to push this out as fast as possible because we really want to have at least something out um, before uh, the summer because we're we're both going right. to be attending a few cons. We'd like to have our um, album mm -hmm. out by then. So sure, sure. That makes sense. And it sounds like it's something worth waiting for. I, I hope so. <laughs> I have to mention, though, I noticed this uh, yesterday when I was doing a little bit of brushing up. Uh, Faster Than You Know is one of the more recent ones. Mm -hmm. Before that was Crusader. Yes. And before that, the uh, track Paper Sky. Yes, Paper Sky. Mm -hmm. I, I've got all three of those on my iPod, and I really do enjoy them. But I noticed something when I listened to them back to back. You like to cut your brother's voice up. <laughs> oh, oh what, a, what a great observation. Yes, that is so true. Um, <laughs> e each one of those in the chorus, it has not a complete note of, ah, uh, but more, uh, 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 uh. Yes. yes, that is very true. Uh, what a, that's, <laughs> you're, you're the first person to actually tell me that, which is, which makes me very happy. Um, oh. because I, uh, yeah, I, I do that, um, it was actually with Paper Sky, um, which was inspired by a bunch of different songs at that time. You know, was, I was really into Zed. I don't know if you know who Zed is, but he um, he's an excellent EDM producer, and he uh, came out with okay. an album called Clarity around that time. And uh -huh. uh, I, 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 it was just a very inspirational album to me. I loved it. Um, I ate it up. I bought it as soon as it came out. Um, mm -hmm. So with Paper Sky, I tried to you know write this more mainstream style sounding song, and. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, this, this one part and my brother's having all these clean vocals throughout the song. I really wanted to just change it up right there. I wanted to show people right. like, Oh, this is different. This is new. I wanted his voice to kind of turn into the synth. 
Um, and I okay. love I love doing that. There's something about the element of surprise when it comes to tracks that just makes yeah. people want to listen to that again. You know, the first time mm-hmm. you hear Crusader and it's this acoustic song, this pop song, and then you hear the voice chop up and match with the instruments, yeah. you're kind of like, oh, wait, well, what was that? Like, was that a glitch or was that supposed to be there? And then you listen to the end. <laughs> and when I, when I first did it, it was... Um, I wrote, I wrote the track, just, you know, I played the guitars. It, it was a really easy song to write. Um, and uh, all, I, all I wanted, you know, I'll normally find one part of melody that I like. And it was that, the little, are we there yet part. So yeah. I recorded, I was like, Gabe, this is, you can write anything you want for the melody, but this has to be in it. Like, I have to chop up your voice at least a little bit. And <laughs> <laughs> so he, he was down with it. Um, we ended up doing that. And there will, uh, for I, I know you're looking forward to it, so there will be mm-hmm. much more vocal chopping in the album. Yay! So <laughs> there you go. You can you have that to look forward to. Um, so uh, I'm anticipating like the thanks credit. There'll be an extra tra- extra track. Just we would like to thank all the people who worked on the track. <laughs> I was thinking about making the whole song. You won't even understand a word he's saying. His whole voice is just <laughs> chopped all the way through. Um, but the, the, the cool thing, um, that I'm really excited about Immortal is that, uh, there actually will be a couple tracks that are very, um, acoustically driven. Um, okay. so it'll, it'll be very clean vocals. Uh, mm-hmm. so I, I want that we wanted the album to have a lot of variety. So people, you know, who yep. appreciate all genres can find something they like off of the album. Mm-hmm. So, uh, you know, there will be dubstep for people like dubstep. There will be this, mm-hmm. uh, kind of acoustic pop sound for people like that. Um, sure. There will be even like, almost like an indie electro type sound, um, which oh, okay. I'm really excited about. I'm producing right now, and then of course just where's my polka? <laughs> I... Uh, you know what? I haven't I haven't thought of that, but I I guess we could throw in a polka track just for you, <laughs> just for you. Yay! <laughs> and maybe I'll chop his voice up just a little bit at the, maybe at the end. You know what I mean? I, like... I've never heard it, but I'm just imagining it now. I honestly believe that a. Uh dub stepped accordion would be the deepest bass sound ever to exist you know i think that is probably the smartest thing i've ever heard in my life <laughs> um, uh, that that is something to look into i'm all about that experience so every every time someone sends me something or you know asks me hey have you ever done this i instantly mm-hmm. just why not you know just try it you know there's there's so many options out there you know when you have a right. program like I do, you know, to with every sound in the world, and you can combine all these sounds. It's just the you know the world is your playground. That's how I see it. You know, when it's come when it comes to writing music, I, I love experimenting with all this stuff. You know, it doesn't necessarily follow a, a guideline or a set of rules like a lot of songs do. And you know, but I, I don't really care about that. I don't want to follow that. I want to write something new. I want something to listen to. Like, oh, this is you know, this is interesting. This is different. You know, so. Yeah, I, I personally love it when somebody takes a combination of instruments that I never imagined before, and it sounds amazing. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, yeah it's there's amazing. a great track that I've got. Oh, I can't remember off the top of my head, but it's by a Japanese group. They don't have any uh, percussion, but instead they have this guy playing the shamisen, really, just in a fast, repetitive motion. And it works. That's it's cool. beautiful. That's very cool. Huh. Yeah. I, you're gonna have to send me that. Um, okay. <laughs> that's no, that's that's really cool. Like I, I I love that. I always look for songs like that. Um, and mm-hmm. then obviously you know there's something uh, beautiful about it. you know a lot of people don't understand like you know true EDM music. Um, you know where it used to be back in the day when EDM was very underground. Um, the song would go on for eight to twelve minutes and it would just be right. you know a thumping bass drum at one twenty eight beats per minute. And just mm-hmm. a really, you know, solid bass, and then just a small trans pluck over top of it, and that that that's what it was, you know. And it just repeated mm-hmm. itself literally for eight, eight or to twelve minutes, and it would maybe, you know, it would change a little bit, you know, to get some cymbals here and there, and some hi hats would come mm-hmm. in over top of the kick and snare, but that was it, you know what I mean? And I really didn't understand that at first, and it would kind of, you know, yeah. I was like, who would listen to this? Like, I don't understand. <laughs> like, where is it going? It's not going anywhere, you know. But uh, I eventually started to appreciate, you know, the beauty of those tracks. And, you know, I try to write it, but a lot of people don't understand it. And they're like, what is this crap? (laughs) I'm reminded of the uh, Strong Bad. uh, Strong Bad. What a fantastic reference. The system is down. The system is down, 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 down. (laughs) Uh, Oh, man. Those those were good days. I haven't actually been to Homestar Runner in a long time. Uh, actually, last week was the three-year anniversary of their last update. Really? Yeah. So wait, have they been? Are, are they shut down? Or they... well, uh, the brothers have actually gotten jobs with Disney. No way. Yeah. 
No, and the ground jumps with Disney, so Homestar Runner probably won't be updated anymore. But oh, man. it's still there, so people can go. Seriously, guys, go go to Homestar Runner, click the random button, and enjoy. The speed mails are wonderful. That is, yeah. Oh no, the, everything on that site is pure gold. Um, oh, yeah. it's, it's, it's fantastic. I, I would entertain myself for days on end with that site. So mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that's, that's fantastic. <laughs> wow. I had no idea they're working for Disney now. That's and you guys cool. can enjoy the loading games. Yes. Now, a lot of people listening wouldn't understand what I'm saying, but what's, <laughs> what it is, is the video would load and it would take a few minutes. Mm -hmm. So they made a small flash game for you to play while your video is loading. <laughs> oh yes. Oh, yes. Things used to take time to load on the internet. <laughs> yep, and uh, now, like, you just want to play the game. Like, you want it to load even more, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. why, why is it loading so fast? <laughs> like, I had to play this game. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Well, uh, we touched on it real fast, but uh, the name that you have, uh, Basic, mm -hmm. you, you were explaining to me earlier that the idea on this is just you're getting a basic overview of electronic music. Right. And yeah. I don't know why, but it reminded me of the band Garbage. Hmm. In that um, their name was chosen because it was essentially uh, three people who had gotten together, and all of the uh, all of the uh, sounds on their tracks were things that other people had tried to make and had gave up on, and just kind of ah, screw it, I can't use this, and thrown it away. Really? So it was the garbage that nobody else wanted that they used and made into music. No way. I, see, I've never heard of that band. Wow. I have to look into them, definitely. But Yeah. yeah. Huh. That's a, okay, another band that I have to send you, send you garbage. Yeah, okay. Send, me, send, <laughs> send basic garbage. Please. <laughs> Everybody. That sounds odd in and of itself. <laughs> yes, it kind of does. Um, no, that, yeah, uh, that's, I guess, kind of how my name came about. Uh, it, mm -hmm. it was totally experimental. Like, I didn't intend on uploading any of my stuff when I first wrote it. Um, right. Actually, one of the first first ever songs my brother put up, I think it actually might have been his first upload as mm. Black Griffin, was uh, Ode to Your 80s, that Breach song. Um, okay. So I think, like, DJ Pon, Pony, like, DJ Pond 3, like, did something of it. Mm -hmm. Um. But it, it, it turned into, like, I don't know if people liked it, but it was literally, I think it was the first song I ever wrote. And I never wanted to release it because I was embarrassed by it. It was bad. <laughs> um, it was a bunch of these 80s songs all mixed together, you know, this electronic mm -hmm. fashion. And then right. uh, I did that. Um, I did Dash Step, and those were all, I never intended to release those. Um, oh, okay. But, I mean, it was really thanks to my brother because he was the one that was brave enough, you know, to first put them online. Sure. Um, right. And when I realized, oh, you know, people appreciate, you know, the music for the thoughtfulness behind it, not necessarily how masterful it sounds. So, mm -hmm. you know, especially, especially this community. And I, I'll tell, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you that, like, I've never, you know, I, I've worked with other communities and I've seen, you know, like I'll go mm -hmm. to other channels and I'll see like EDM artists, you know, talk to those people. Mm -hmm. and th this, this community that I'm involved with, that me and my brother are involved with, is extremely accepting of, you know, all of that. You know, if, if yeah. something isn't quite up to par, you know, like sound wise, they'll find something else to appreciate instead of just ratting on that one thing or insulting that person mm. for not doing that well. And that's one of the right. things I love about it, because I can be myself and be creative. And I know mm -hmm. I won't get, you know, you know, I won't I won't get crap for it. So. Right. Right. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Though, to be honest, I mean, you were telling me of the effort that you put in in finding the different I admit most of it was over my head, but <laughs> you were talking of filling the frequencies. Yes, filling and... the frequencies. Um, well, that, that's 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 today. Um, where back in the day, Please. you know, I could I could spend a, I could spend maybe a day, you know, I could do four hours and I could have an entire track done, and I'd be satisfied with it. Um, I can't yeah. I can't spend uh, less than I mean a cumulative like all the hours put together probably. Mm -hmm. uh, probably 16 to 24 hours. I can't spend less than that amount of time on a track now before I put wow. it online, just because I've gotten extremely nitpicky. And uh, sure. while I think that's annoying at times because in, I don't have that time necessarily sure. Um, sure. To, to get rid of, uh, it's at the same time, I, f I feel good about it because I know that each track I produce is going to be better than the one I just released. 
So um, um, that's a good point. So uh, that that's that's one thing I like. I guess it's I rationalize it to myself. I'm, it makes me feel a little bit better about it. But um, you know, <laughs> I'll, I'll I'll finish a track and I'll be like, all right, I worked you know 42 hours on this track. I'm really excited. I'll upload it. And then it just like won't do well, and I'll be like, oh. oh. And I mean, it's it's okay. I understand. Like some tracks just don't do that well, and some tracks do. Like Dash Step, where I took mm-hmm. four hours. You know, this song right. that I'm going to upload tomorrow, um, tomorrow is in, uh, you know, the tenth. Um, yeah, tenth, right. Well, I, I've I probably put in thirty eight to forty hours on this track, and it's oh it's, it's actually it's a remix of a track by Philip Phillips, who's a country artist. Um, okay. Not a huge I'm actually familiar country. with them. That's the person who did um, I Swear I'll Make This Your Home. Yes, that, that okay. one. Um, his next biggest song is called Gone, Gone, Gone. Um, okay. I think it was released last I year. I don't get a lot of American music here, but that one was actually playing in a shoe store, and I had to stop them and ask, who, they, who is this? Yeah. Who is this? Yeah. It's, it's, that's a great song. Um, I, I took one of his songs, and uh, I, don't, I don't know. I'm sure you've heard of Avicii. Okay, yeah. Um, he, he does – this whole idea of, you know, taking country music and kind of turning, mm-hmm. you know, combining it with this electro house type style. So right, I did, right. I did that with the song I'm about to release and I've spent a lot of hours on it and I'm, you know, I feel like it's, it's at a point where, it, you know, you can play it through, you know, tiny little headphones and you can play it through mm-hmm. a system at, you know, ultra music festival and it'll sound good through both systems because I've, you know, okay. I, I, I try to go through that. I go through my desktop speakers, my headphones, my studio speakers. Right. I go through everything I can before I can get, um, sound that I, even before I put it online, but you know, I'm sure like that it, it won't, you know, reach that many people. That's okay with me. You know, um, uh, mm. I, I just, I, it, it feels good to me, you know, to finish the track and be like, okay. Now I know I'm this much closer to getting a better sound. So, yeah, right. Right. Yeah. Huh. But yeah, you mentioned that you were releasing a track tomorrow. Yes, I am. It'll be called. Well, it, it's it's an it's not an original. Um, it's a remix, but it's called "Gone, Gone, mm-hmm. Gone" by uh, Philip mm-hmm. Phillips. So, mm-hmm. if you want to go to, you know, just type in "basic Gone, Gone, Gone" and it'll be right there. <laughs> well, so. if they're not subscribed to your channel at this point, they should be. So, you know, go check it out. B double A S K. Yes. Yes, the the double A the the symbol. That I don't know how it, it I don't know how it came about, but it just did one day. So I'm guessing it's just an attempt to be first in alphabetical order. You know what? You want we... to be ahead of all of the other people named Basic <laughs> in the world. So we're going to put double A's right here. If not, I would probably would have done triple A's. You know, I'm hoping. Oh yeah. See, oh, see, I could play off the double A, like triple A battery type scenario. I could just put the B, we... then like a battery symbol, and then S I K. I never yeah. thought of that. That could be something. Ooh, to... that's a good one. Actually, Apparently, <laughs> there are B batteries somewhere. Just they're only used in a very specific manner. Really? Well, yeah, that's what I heard. Learn new things every day. It's, it's cool. <laughs> or you could go with uh, uh, Dimitri Martin, who said that he believes there's no B batteries because you wouldn't tell if somebody was asking for a battery or stuttering. <laughs> but I like some B batteries. <laughs> <laughs> that's a very good point. Uh, wow, well, that's pretty funny. Um, nice. Yeah. One of the. Um, uh, well, I guess it's more memorable if somebody saw it, but they might not have seen it, but it's a good story. Um, you attended, and I'm sorry that, to mention he who shall not be he. unnamed, but um, <laughs> you showed up by surprise at one of Black Griffin's panels at a mm-hmm. convention he was going to. Yes, yes, I did. Uh, it was actually it was actually a BronyCon in Baltimore. Mm-hmm. That's the one he flew in from Japan. I hadn't seen mm-hmm. him in a year, and he didn't know I was coming. Um, but I was in Annapolis <laughs> at the time, so. I drove yeah. up for the weekend, mm-hmm. and uh, it, I, I surprised him. I, I, I ran up. I was actually Rob Bob. I don't know if you talked to Rob Bob, uh, but he yeah. uh, he led me to the panel, and I went over to the very front of the audience, and I was sitting there, you know, with all these people, and I was calling his name out, you know, for <laughs> fifteen minutes, just shouting, Gabe, 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 oh, at the top of my voice, and these people were looking at me like, who is this guy? Like, why is he shouting Gabe's name? Or, yeah. and, I, and finally, I don't know what, what got his attention, but he saw me and, you know, freaked out. Um, you, you, it's on YouTube. It's somewhere. Uh, mm-hmm. And he's like, oh, my brother's here. And he, uh, him and Mike, Mike the Mike actually took, opened the gates and like brought me on stage where the panel was and sat me down at the panel, which I was not 
ready for at all. Um, right, right. And I wasn't and at that time last year. I wasn't anywhere even close to the artists on the stage. So it was very cool, like to meet. <laughs> you know, I I met Alex Esper for the first time. I met Tombstone for the first time, and it was very cool. Um, nice. And then for the rest of the night, I was uh, I was backstage. I actually performed with um, Gabe and the Creepers that night for oh, the nice. first time too. So it was kind of like a big surprise for me too. So it was it was a lot oh, of yeah. fun. I really enjoyed it. <laughs> And uh, more recently, you've uh, performed with uh, the Creepers and Gabe in the DC concert, right? Yes, that is true. Uh, at, at Jeremy Spicer's house, actually, it was at a. It was going to be in DC, um, and then there were some complications, mm -hmm. you know, with Canada oh, really? and all that stuff. Oh, you right. know, this, uh, this, I don't understand that, but that's how it works. So we ended up holding it um, uh, off in. It was somewhere in Virginia. I'm not, I'm not entirely sure where it was, but it was it was mm -hmm. an awesome, awesome time. Um, this really beautiful venue, and uh, yeah, we uh, I was on the guitar most of the time. Michael Creeper was on the piano. Um, mm -hmm. uh, Puno Kenobi was actually there. He was on bass guitar, and uh, okay. and then Gabe and you know Michelle and Monique were there too. So it was it was a really great time. We it was supposed nice. it was supposed to be like I think an hour concert, and we stretched mm -hmm. it to about two and a half hours just <laughs> because you, you know how Gabe and Michelle when they get on stage together they just yes yes, yes. They, they have a lot of fun so I I get the feeling that if we ever did a revamp of whose line is it anyway just put them on stage and say a single word and just come back a few hours later see what's going on and I, I would find I, out they've made an album and a play <laughs> and a three-part musical and exactly yep. uh, exactly <laughs> And it's 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 a pleasure to watch. It is. Um, so, um, however, when it goes on for three days, which it did when I was there, at times it's like, okay, guys, it's time to focus. Like, <laughs> I, I have no idea how Monique Creever, just the most wonderful person ever. I don't know mm -hmm. how she handles. You know, they, they were in L.A. and Vancouver, and mm -hmm. you know, down on the East Coast, and she had to deal with that the entire time. I dealt with it for three days and I was practically insane by the end of the weekend. So, um, it was, it, it was a lot of fun though. I had, I had a great time. So it was a really cool experience for me. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. It would be just uh, chaos, but sometimes you can control it. Just yes. not for long. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Well, um, Are there... Go ahead. Oh no. Uh, I, I was just going to say like, um, with the whole guitar and piano thing, uh, mm what what the the weird thing is i was hoping to dj and what because that's what i do at my college um mm -hmm. I, I actually i started a dj program here um oh, nice. and we're, we're the premier djs at the naval academy and uh okay. we uh we bring artists to the academy to perform mm -hmm. um so i've actually had the pleasure to meet a lot of um really cool people uh, i I, nec I don't necessarily think they're fantastic musicians but they're great people um okay. so, uh, maroon five katie perry um okay, okay i got to meet wayne brady which was pretty cool and then oh, um nice. so but Good uh, segue. Thank you. <laughs> yeah but um it's uh the um uh, at, at the cons next year i'm hoping to actually be djing which is what i would be most most comfortable with and people put me on a guitar or piano um mm -hmm. i like it it's just i don't feel as if i can perform as well so we can get you. We can try to get you one of those uh, guitars that's actually a, a DJ table. Those are incredible. I've seen those. <laughs> um, yes. Uh, yeah. The, those. The, I, I've seen those. Um, the ones with like a, a XY a crossfader on like the uh, near the body mm -hmm. of it. The, the, they're they're yeah. pretty. They're pretty insane. <laughs> Uh, because nothing says style like taking something that is intended to be on a table and hanging it from your neck. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> so I guess uh, meeting those musicians uh, leads us to the uh, um, Dead Mouse story that you're going to tell. Oh yeah. Um, so uh, Dead Mouse brought me into electronic music. I I started mm -hmm. listening to his music, you know, when I first started working with FL Studio, and I'm sure you know most. Uh, there are a lot of people, you know hopefully even people listening to the show, you know, who are interested in, um, you know, producing music, you know, you listen to dead mouse and, you know, you try, you try to copy his sounds. And I'll just tell you right now, it, it took me, you know, three and a half years to even get close to that. And I'm still working towards it. And he is yeah. just light years ahead of me in production, but I had mm -hmm. the honor of working with the operations team here to actually bring him to the Naval Academy. So 
Um, hopefully in April, I'll be able to hang out um, and meet with Joel Zimmerman or Dead Mouse, oh, as he's known. So, um, right. which I'm just absolutely ecstatic about. Um, I hope he doesn't, you know, shoot me because I'm like acting all weird. And I, I try not to, you know, I hold in my starstruck, you know, sure, sure, you know, emotions. But um, he, he's, he's, I'm a, I'm a huge fan. Like everything he does, like I'm very, mm. like I think he's just an excellent representation of electronic music. And uh, right. so I'm, I'm extremely excited to meet him. So. <laughs> Yeah, it's difficult to not fan squee the first time you meet somebody. It, yes, it is. It, yes, it, it is. really is. It absolutely is. I did. I admit it fully. I was like, huh, "You're, huh, hmm, I, hmm, I like what you do." <laughs> and then, and then it just they're always just like, "Okay, thank you," and just walk the other way. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? Um, so hopefully, like uh, the the last the last guy I met, I don't know if you know who Brantley Gilbert is. He's another country artist. I had no idea who the guy was. Okay. Uh, he's a rising country artist, um, okay, okay. and I had no idea who he was, but it was my job to drive him around when he came to the academy. But I right, had to right. find him first, and I had no idea what he looked like. So I was walking around this huge like concert hall trying to mm -hmm. find this guy. And so I was just like, all right, you know what? I'll be able to tell because like he's famous, and it's pretty obvious when you see a famous person. So I was right. hoping that's what I was betting on. <laughs> and, and sure enough, here comes this guy. You know, dressed in like a tank top with these gauges in his ears and spiked, <laughs> you know, spiked hair and a mm -hmm. really loud, obnoxious voice. And I was like, that's him. It's got to be him. And I walked over and I was like, Brantley Gilbert. And he was like, yeah, what's up, man? And I was like, oh, okay, great. Because I had no idea. I didn't say that, but I had no right, idea who right. the guy was. Um, so that wasn't quite as awkward. So it, it'll be a little different with Dead Mouse because I'll definitely recognize yes, him from probably. very far. Hopefully you'll be able to recognize Dead Mouse by the looks and not have to. Oh, Hope, go for somebody. Hope that he's wearing, you know, the huge <laughs> mouse ears. And no, I just hope because uh, I, I, I follow him like on Twitter, and he's he's <laughs> honestly he's just a giant. Uh, I, I don't know how to say this in the most polite way possible. Uh, a, a terrible person. Okay. He's um, <laughs> he's he's just he's not very nice, or and he mm. doesn't really care about it. Okay. So he um, he's 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 pretty interesting in that way. But uh, <laughs> like unlike Skrillex, like I actually got to meet Skrillex too, which is a really cool mm -hmm. cool time. Um, and he was just the nicest person you've ever met. You know, he stayed behind like signing people's autographs and talking to people, talking to his fans, right. while his agents were literally like pooling on him to get him to the golf cart so he could drive off to his bus so he could drive to the airport. You right. know what I mean? Right. So um, we'll, we'll see. We'll see if Dead Mouse is the same way. Um, I highly doubt it, but we'll see. It could be. We'll see. Yeah. Yep. Online personas are rarely exactly the same as a person actually is. But we'll see. That's, that's actually that's a good point. Yeah, that's true. So. <laughs> that's why we have online personas, because if we're going to be the same person, why do we need to go online? <laughs> hey, there we go. Good point. I like it. Oh. Well, let's see. Uh, the album Immortal is coming out in the first uh, half of the year. Mm -hmm. But um, are there any other projects that are coming up that you're able to talk about? Um, honestly, everything I'm kind of doing right now is focused towards the album. Uh, right. I'm working on a, a song right now with my sister. Um, oh, that's right. The, the singer. Mm -hmm. um, she goes by Ava online, but her name is Susanna. And she's, uh -huh. she's fantastic. Very talented. Mm -hmm. um, I'll probably be releasing that sometime next month, just to keep people, you know, interested. Um, <laughs> we'll be, uh, but o over the course of the next three months, me and my brother will release. Let me count. Let me look at my list here. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six songs. Wow. Oh no, I'm sorry. Five, five songs. We're releasing five songs before the album is actually dropped, and okay. then the album will have an extra five songs on it. So, um, do we have a track, track number? Count, uh, we do. The track number is fifteen songs. Wow, that's a so, big album. Yes, that is that is why it's. And I'm guessing the top one, one will very, be the polka with just uh, varied vocals. Uh, exactly, it's vocals. a bonus track though. You have Yay. you have to buy the whole album in order to get it. Of Doug, course, no the problem. polka track with the vocals. <laughs> <laughs> with uh with what, what do you say the accordion the dubstep accordion, dubstep accordion yep dubstep you, accordions. Just, you can't you can't beat that i mean there's there's nothing better <laughs> while you're actually checking the uh the newspaper i was actually producing that beat and it sounds fantastic so really you were okay. right yeah yes. good for me yeah <laughs> 
Anything yeah. that allows more chances for Weird Al Yankovic to perform with people, I'm happy with. <laughs> now, okay, I haven't seen the new episode. My brother was freaking out when he heard about it. Weird Al is on the next episode? Uh, um, no, it, the upcoming episode. Felt, oh, the upcoming, okay. It's, it's an that, upcoming episode. It's not it's, yet. Okay. My brother was, was trying to tell me that it was the next episode that was coming out. And... Um, I was getting excited, and now that's not the case. So, oh well. I, I guess we have something to look forward to. Yes, it is coming. It is coming, just not just yet. That that'll be very interesting. I'm excited mm -hmm. for that. Yep. <laughs> I mean, he is Canadian after all. He probably well. Canada I mean, beyond that, William place. Anderson, the person who oh. does the scoring for the show, not the songs, mm -hmm. but the show, uh, right. used to be in Weird Al's band. No way. Yeah. Wow. Absolutely. That's. That's incredible. That, wow. Uh, chance, I mean, I, you know, I, I doubt it'll ever be publicly released, but that's my guess as to how it started. I bet you're right. Mm -hmm. Wow. Will Manson is extremely talented um, okay. from just listening to the tracks. Is my, my ultimate goal in music and in the industry is to become a composer for film. Oh, okay. So that's, that, that's, that's my end goal. But this is, you know, obviously something I'm very interested in as of now. And mm -hmm. it's, uh, I think it's a good way to get there. So that's I, listening to his music. Just it, it's incredible. Yeah. He's very talented. I'd love to meet him one day. Yes. So. That would be nice. He's, yeah. he doesn't have a Twitter, which I know a lot of people are, Oh, please get a Twitter. Play, play. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. Some people like their privacy. I understand that, you know, well, as of recording this, I know that for the past few days, um, Ashley Ball, the voice of Applejack and Rainbow Dash, mm -hmm. told Peter New that she was going to get a Twitter for herself. Right now, the only Twitter she has is with the – as of recording this, the only Twitter account she has is for her band, Hey Ocean. Right, yeah. Which but that's is for incredible. all of them. And honestly, it's a little bit rude to ask an entire group of people questions for just one person. It's, right. You know, yeah, that's A lot of people do true. it, but really – it shouldn't be done, but anyway. And it's a band. You don't ask... Eh, whatever. <laughs> but oh, she yeah, did I say that she that. was going to get her own uh, Twitter, and she told Peter that she would do it, and he told everybody she's going to be doing it, and I'll let you know when she does. And I see, like, every five or six hours, Peter is giving out a tweet in response to somebody, no, not yet, I'll let you know. No, <laughs> not yet, I'll let you know. Oh, that... Wow. That's that's pretty insane. She, well, all I can wow. think of is if she was hesitant to do so beforehand, a rush <laughs> like <laughs> this isn't going to help, guys. Relax. Be cool. It'll happen. Yes. She said it. Exactly. He said he'll tell us. Be cool. Be cool. Be cool. Exactly. That's wow. Yeah, that's that's pretty neat. Um, yeah. I'm not. I'm, I haven't talked to her, but I know like uh, uh, her her band is incredible. Yes. Um, their their new. Um, album is, is was awesome. Like the, yeah. it came out. Like I listened to the whole thing. My brother sent it to me. Like I just I, I loved yeah, it. It's amazing. So um, yeah, I, I find that surprising that you know someone that big um in the show wouldn't be you know that interested in the social media aspect of it. Well, I know it took a long time for uh, Tabitha Saint Germain to join Twitter, and it wasn't so really? much shyness. It was that she wasn't sure that anybody would get her humor. She thought oh. she would be misunderstood all the time. Oh. That's, and that's not uh, as as we all know. It's not the case. No, not the case. They but that's what she was afraid it. of. And looking oh, at her humor now, I'm like, okay, you know, if my family were to read this, they wouldn't get it at all. I understand <laughs> <Right>. your uh, <laughs> hesitation. Yeah, sure. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, uh, it's a. Uh, I don't know. I guess um, my sense of humor is a little bit skewed because my, my whole family. It, it's it's my brother times six. That's that's our family. <laughs> So um, I've seen the Christmas video of the improv Christmas song, and yes, that's <laughs> what I mean. When we're bored, that's that's what we'll do. You know, we'll sit down, and mm -hmm. I'll just pick up a guitar, and my sister and my brother will just sing. You know, and it doesn't have to make sense, but the less it makes sense, the funnier it is. You know, yeah. so yeah, that was quite good. You know, I should. <laughs> hmm, hmm. There are rumors. Uh, historical rumors at one point somebody made an opera and the words to the opera were the constitution of the united states of america and from all accounts everybody who heard it it was a fabulous opera it was amazing but no records of it have remained nobody knows what it sounded like because they never anything that they wrote down was somehow lost so huh? i'm wondering if 
Now, if any family could do it, your guys would be up for the challenge. <laughs> um, I, you know what? I think I actually have the opera in my storage compartment in the garage. I think I'll just go up there and just grab it, and then we'll just record it next time I'm home. How about that? Excellent! Yay! <laughs> I'm just thinking you sit down with a guitar and the, everybody improvs the sound and just as long as they read the words, it's okay. Uh, that sounds like a fantastic <laughs> idea. That's I, it, I think, yeah, that's going to happen. That's <laughs> have, you, have you proposed the idea to Gray Kale? I have not proposed it to Slate Bok Choy yet, no. <laughs> um, <laughs> hey, it takes the lyric writing out of songwriting. We just have to get the... <laughs> <laughs> it's so true. It's yeah. so true. You have that. I mean, it's it's halfway done right there. So yeah, it's there we go. Not a problem. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> oh man. Well, a question that I ask in each of my interviews, um, mm -hmm. in all of My Little Pony, what would you say is the one line or scene that defines you or speaks out to you Ooh. strongest? Um, that's a good question. Uh, I, I'll, I'll be I'll thinking. be honest with you right now. Um. Mm -hmm. The first time I really like started watching the show was mm -hmm. this last semester with mm -hmm. my brother, um, who took you know a long time in convincing. But he, oh, sure. uh, you know, because um, he was he's so big in the community, I feel bad, you know, because I, I love supporting him and everything he does. I want right. to just tell everybody about, um, and which I don't have to because he's obviously made his way in the community, but. Um, <laughs> Uh, it, it, I wanted to, you know, understand more about it, especially because we're writing an album based on, you know, the show, which I don't know if it's the first album ever done that's completely surrounding this uh, fandom, but... Um, no, we're, no, not the first. Yeah, I'm, I'm, but... I'm sure, I'm sure it's not. <laughs> um, but uh, um, I wanted to know more about it. So mm -hmm. I, I think the, the first one I watched with my brother were actually the Discord episodes. Okay. And something about, what, something about Discord, because we actually wrote a song about him which we'll be releasing in the next couple of weeks here. Um, yeah. Uh, so that was really one of the first things that uh, I, was, I really say sparked my attention on okay. the show, because when, when you first hear about it, you know, the people, the haters and everything one like that will talk about, um, you know, the, the way it's written, they'll just assume all sorts of things, you know, just yeah. from the pictures and the fan art and everything like that, but mm -hmm. they don't look at, you know, the storyline or all the stuff sure. that, you know, you know, they look at the Hasbro part of it, basically. Yes, yeah. You know, they don't look at the the genius of all the writers and everything like that that goes mm -hmm. into it. So, the the whole Discord episode, um, and learning about you know for the first time about the elements of harmony and all that stuff was really really cool for me, and that helped <laughs> that it really helped me get into the whole idea of it. Um, really, the the first part uh, where Discord finally you know breaks out of his you know statue of you know his stone mm -hmm. self and um appears in the glass um in that you know that area it was uh, and starts talking to all of them about you know he says oh I, I would never turn you know one of you into stone yeah like that was that you know the uh i don't know the funny evil like of it just kind of captured the whole idea of the show to me and i, I just mm -hmm. from that point on um discord's obviously you know a big i, I i'm really i like him a lot just because I don't know. He's new. He adds, yeah. you know, freshness to this. It's 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 interesting. But um, mm. so that that and then um, the other big part was uh, talking to my brother about Luna, mm -hmm. um, which is this other which is other big part. And we were actually writing a song about her too. It, it turns oh, out yeah. that the people oh, I'm yeah. interested in is the one we <laughs> the ones we write songs about, and uh, the idea of banishment and all that stuff. Um, okay. Just it, I don't know. It's just a lot of you know, a lot. The show's more deep than I originally thought it was going to be, which sure, is sure. which is pretty cool. Yeah, so. yeah, it, it seems to be a, a surprising thing for a lot of people. Oh my gosh, she yeah. sent her own sister away. Oh wow. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, um, it's 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 definitely well thought out. Um, yeah, I like it a lot. Mm -hmm. so. All right. Yeah, and and I'll, I'll obviously like um, I, I'm definitely I'm new to it, so mm -hmm. I'll uh, and I'll be the first to admit it. You know, like I oh. I, I will be learning more about it. You know, as time goes on mm -hmm. and. Um, but yeah, it's my brother's still like you know getting me into the whole. Um, he, he's helping me understand it better, you know, because right. I, I can't just jump into you know the middle of season three and just like watch sure. it, um, because you know I won't understand all of the the storyline before and everything like that. So he's really getting well, me into it. So yeah, I think that the show is really good at 
most of the episodes, most of them, if you just sit down and watch that one and that's your first episode, you'll be okay. I think there are some that, exceptions, yeah. some exceptions. Right. But I think for a large part of it, it's pretty obvious what's happening from the beginning, and you can, oh, that must be the shy character, so I understand the conflict now. Okay. Uh-huh. Yeah, that, that, that is actually true. Um, from the episodes we watched after that, yeah, I, I have noticed that. They, they're mm-hmm. really good at you know creating their own plots around each episode. Yeah. Um, really, I guess the story is carried out through the double episodes. Yes, um, that's true. Th- that's that's where like the you know everything is really brought out. Yeah, the season episode. openers and closers are usually the ones that. What's mm-hmm. going on here? Oh, okay, I got it now. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, but um, yeah, I'm definitely excited to learn more about it, and uh, hmm. you know, so yeah, it's 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 new for me, so mm-hmm. I'm I'm pr- I'm pretty excited. You know, obviously, you know, with the music, and it's it's a good yeah. way of inspiring me to continue to write. Good. So, um, yep. Very nice. And with the imminent release of Immortal, I'm guessing that convention attendants would see performance of some tracks from this. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Uh, okay. We um, we have uh, my brother already has a spot um, in. Uh, I'm actually I'm not I'm not sure which con it is, but he he has a spot in some con that I forget the name of. And then uh, we're <laughs> both. <okay>. Uh, <laughs> Uh, we both have a, a slot um, for our actual album mm-hmm. um, at the con uh, this summer in Baltimore. So, okay. uh, yeah, we'll definitely be playing most of our album um, at, at, at cons this year. So I'm really excited for that. I'm, I'm hoping that they pick up and people really get excited for it, too. Cause, I'm sure. I'm sure. Um, and all yeah. you have to do is just bring an oscillating fan and put it right in front of his voice so you get the voice chopped live. <laughs> no, he, uh, he, does this, he, does, he does this special thing where uh, he'll just take the mic and just move it side to side. And it does okay. pretty much the same thing. So you know, oh, he just picks up his voice when it's right in front of his mouth and it sounds... I don't even have to do anything, so it makes my job that much easier. That's a good so, idea. I... I... I can imitate that when I'm talking. So if I'm speaking, I want, I want, what, I, I, but that, that's pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I've never tried it singing before. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. All right. Challenge. Well, part. you know what? Don't worry about it. I'll, I can, I can tune you. I have all these programs. <laughs> you just, you just talk and then I'll just, you know what? We'll just have some choppy vocals over top of the polka dubstep. How does that sound? How about some 1980s robot for you? Oh, yes. I can do a 1980s robot voice rather <laughs> easily. Wow, that's that's pretty impressive. Do you have to like swallow something in order to get that sound, or is it just no, like, no? I just have to uh, uh, stress my vocal cords to the limit to get that. I, I can't do it right. very long, but a short time is okay. <laughs> now, see, we had that, and then we chopped that. Like, that's just that's a note. that's a whole other level right there. Chop that in. <laughs> chop the accordion. And in the spaces oh. where the accordion isn't, put that. The voice, <laughs> yes. Oh, we have ourselves a new genre. Excellent, yes. That's, 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 that's it right there. Yeah. Polka that's 80s nice robot the dubstep. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> okay, yeah, that, that's going to take it. Uh, yeah, mm-hmm. <laughs> that's definitely, that's definitely going to be in the works. <laughs> well, everybody, today we have been speaking with Basic who, as far as I know, is, you know, doesn't have any family members in the fandom, but I'm not sure. Nope. Yeah. Not one. Not one. Not one. Not check one. out Black Griffin if you'd like, but really, check out Basic's ch- YouTube channel <laughs> and his Twitter and uh, SoundCloud. Yes, I do oh. have one of those. Okay. All right. yeah. And actually, uh, all, all my stuff is free on SoundCloud, so don't worry about ripping it off YouTube. Just go on SoundCloud and it's all free. Free, 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 free. One of the best descriptions I've ever seen is in one of your videos. It says, nothing has ever been this free. <laughs> that yes. was beautiful <laughs> thank you <laughs> yes it is true it is the freest you will ever find mm-hmm. it's more free than so. anything you've experienced beforehand <laughs> that is true that is true <laughs> yes <laughs> well thank you so much for coming by and speaking with us today no problem thanks for having me on it was a good time yeah. everyone this has been Into the Spotlight with Osaka Jack on Evergreen Network we'll catch you next time